Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to feature a brand new speaker plan set that's available for download on my site. And it's a two-way featuring a 15-inch woofer. And um, this video is just going to be a high-level summary. And then I'll post a second video that's a more in-depth explanation of the, uh, the overall design. And so we're using a 15-inch woofer and a sealed cabinet. The uh, cabinet, it can be uh, placed into the corner. You can see that it has uh, the, the corner placement enclosure and it's available in three different configurations. You can see here, uh, this is with the horn mounted into the enclosure and then there's another option uh, for those that want the horn placed uh, above the enclosure, just mounted into a basic baffle. And then in these instances, with the horn mounted on top, uh, you can place the speaker directly onto the floor. So this would be probably representing the most basic construction. Um, when the horn is mounted into the enclosure, then you do need to uh, construct a speaker stand and the plans for the stand are also included. Um, the most elaborate version I would say would be this one where we have a, like basically like a picture frame around the horn and it just is an aesthetic choice um, and so you can pick the configuration that, that you prefer based on the overall appearance and, and with your woodworking ability. So the cabinet like I mentioned is allows you to place the speaker into the corner of your room um, I do have a render here of it uh, in the corner of the room and so you can see how discreet it looks the speaker uh, only protrudes out from the corner uh, 40 centimeters which uh, is really nice now the speaker does not have to go into the corner of the room it can be placed out from the wall in a normal kind of two channel setup and you still get really really good bass performance uh, in that in that arrangement so um, the cabinet requires that the woofer is mounted from inside the cabinet and so you can see here that the one panel is removable uh, to allow uh, face mount of the woofer however that is an option you can simply forego that and place the mount the woofer from outside of the enclosure and so the only disadvantage to that is just the aesthetics um, personally I prefer the clean look of a, of a rear mounted woofer and so uh, it's worth a little bit more work uh, in my mind but it's entirely up to you so um, the main thing with the enclosure shape is to provide the ability to do corner placement but it also uh, provides non-parallel walls in the cabinet to prevent internal standing waves and resonances uh, inside the cabinet and that's a critical part of why this project is able to be successful um, and not create a kind of a, a boomy boxy type sound character so um, the drivers are readily available um, here in North America drivers are available from Mattisound or you can also purchase the the kit from me uh, driver the drivers and crossover components now um, I've recently introduced an additional option that's also included with the plans which includes the option of going with the ES600 by radio and so it includes the um, the 3d CAD files for that uh, horn and you can either 3d print it or have it CNC machined locally um, the crossover for this is different and I've also included this the schematic uh, for this version as well and so the cross this is the the raw response um, of the ES600 and this is the raw re frequency response of the H280 horn included in the in the original plans you can see that there is improvement in, in linearity uh, with the ES600 horn and then the crossover itself is quite uh, is quite simple uh, because of the uh, flatter frequency response so um, so yeah that would be either uh, upgrade path down the road or you can simply start with this uh, ES600 as part of your build plans so I think I've covered everything just on a high level um, so when you do make the transaction on my website you you do automatically receive all the required files uh, to uh, build the speakers it's a zipped folder you can play it contains uh, PDF files and so this would be an example of 
the assembly drawing where it's calling out the individual components required to construct the cabinet and then these bubble callouts are referenced in this bill of material here and you can see the part numbers listed these part numbers are all the different components and so when you go to the detail drawings which are further down in the PDF file that that's included you'll see that there's um, detail drawings for example here's the front baffle and the um, the uh, part number is referenced in the template, uh, the drawing template there for the, the part detail drawing. You can see 002, and so that's referenced in the in the assembly bill of material as 002. So that's kind of how I've arranged my drawings. It starts out with an assembly drawing, and it goes into more detail with detailing out each component that you have to have to build. I prefer it that way. Um, that way. When you're, when you're doing the project, you're making a single component, you have a drawing in front of you and you're making that one drawing and then it will all come together uh, based on the assembly drawing. So just kind of helps um, spoon feed you the information as you're, as you're building um, because it just helps reduce the chance of making mistakes. So um, the cabinet material is 18 millimeter thick birch plywood. Um, if you're going to use MDF, I strongly suggest that you double the wall thickness and also use internal bracing. The main reason for that is that uh, birch plywood is four times stiffer than MDF. And so we are relying on the um, full hardwood core Baltic birch plywood to provide the required structural strength of the cabinet. Um, for the cabinet stuffing, it's a simple case of just doing pillow stuffing or polyfill, loosely filled 100% into the enclosure. Um, so the crossover has been optimized for the best sound quality. Um, this contrasts against the situation where sometimes crossovers are designed for pro sound applications where they're not necessarily uh, a perfectly flat frequency response. They they would rely on a, a DSP uh, equalization to to finally do the flattening of the frequency response. This is not the case. So the there's been extensive listening done on this crossover to fully optimize it for audiophile listening. Um, and it's not just the objective test data that I relied on. It was um, you know the last leg of the crossover development is done to fully um, fine-tune that sound quality for uh, two-channel music applications. So here we see um, the frequency response. You see that we get good bass extension down to about 45 Hertz um, and this is with a regular placement with the speaker uh, placed away from the rear wall and about 70 centimeters away from the side wall. So intermodulation distortion you can see here that we're getting at, uh, around 75 dB uh, through the mid-range, which is extremely low distortion, uh, similar to that of audio amplifi amplifiers, 0.01% distortion, so an excellent result um, on, on that front. So um, I will include another video that dives into uh, why I went with sealed and it provides some comparison data against uh, reflex alignment to show you that uh, that indeed this design uh, does have a, a really strong backing in terms of the test data and, and why we went this direction so um, that's it um, uh, take care and have a great day